TNHRNC department forcefully occupies Ayodhya Mantapam, located in the heart of Chennai, in the constituency that BJP corporator Uma Anandan represents. Is the DMK rattled that the BJP has opened its account in its citadel? Is that what is happening? So let's take a quick look at what transpired. But before I tell you what transpired, I want you to just watch this one video. You can clearly see the lady officer saying everyone is going to be booked under one section only. Here you go. Madam, I think section fill pan liya, madam. I think me, I think me. Section, I think only actually. Oh. Ah. No, no, no. I don't think they have it. Where is section, madam? Okay, okay, okay. There you go. So she insists that she, they are being booked under one section only, and whatever be that section, we don't know that. However, according to reliable sources, all the protesters that were booked are going to be charged under IPC sections 147, 186, 294B and 341. Now the sources go on to tell us that the government is trying to convert this into an anti-Hindu agenda by adding as much charges as possible. So we are going to go and quickly take a look at this section. But before we do that, let us listen to what Uma Anandan had said because she was present at the site and she has chronologically described the events. She says that officials came at 10.30 a.m. to try and take over the Ayodhya Mantapam, citing the Tamil Nadu High Court ruling. When Uma Anandan pointed out the lapses in their approach. For example, you know, the High Court order is issued, but do you know when it gets uploaded? Not one or two days later, 20 days later, giving the people who wanted to appeal as little time as possible. Next, the what is supposed to happen is whenever a takeover is planned, a show cause notice has to be issued. But looks like they didn't do that either. So, when she pointed out all these things, the said officials went away. They went like a distance away. And they regrouped. They discussed. And then as the discussions were going on, the police presence started increasing in this area. And finally, at 2.30 p.m., the local Tehsildar arrives. God knows why he was there. He, he's got nothing to do with him. So now... Now let us take a look at some of the sections under which they are being charged. I have spoken with a person who is present there and I am also going to give his views on what really transpired. First, let us take a look at section 147 which is rioting. For, for that section to be imposed, usually there has to be a section 144 in place. I mean, this is done for a very serious crime, such as, you know, people throwing stones at each other, attacking each other. That's why the section 144 is imposed to try and clamp down, have flag marches, to try and restore law and order. None of that things happened. Okay. There was a gathering of devotees and this is the day after uh, Ram Naomi and, and Ayodhya Mandapam is a place where you know, the bhaktas come and there are bhajans taking place. I mean, this is what was going on. This cannot be called as an illegal gathering. If this is an illegal gathering, every church, every Muslim, mosque, every temple is an illegal gathering. Because after all, you chant mantras, you chant hymns, you sing songs. That's exactly what happens. So this, in the opinion of the person who was present, is 147 is not applicable because this is run on public money, the Ayodhya Mandapam, the devotees have a right to question under what section the government officials have tried to occupy and they have to clarify their doubts. They did nothing, nothing of that sort. And, and, and when, you know, uh, the police is brought in, what does the police do? Well, I'll come to that in just a one minute. Okay. Now let's take a look at section 186. What is section 186? Whoever voluntarily obstructs any public servant in the discharge of his public functions, it shall be punished with an imprisonment 
of either description for a term which may extend up to three months or with fine which may extend to 500 rupees or both. Now, what Uma Anandan was saying is under what grounds, right? This guy could not give a satisfactory explanation. That doesn't mean that they can charge everyone under section 186. I mean, even then, the questions were being asked by one or two persons only. Why put everybody, why tar everyone with the same brush? That's another interesting question. Now, section 294B states, whoever to the annoyance of others by singing, reciting or uttering any obscene songs, ballad or words, in or any near any public place shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend up to three months or with fine or with both. None of the participants used any abusive obscene languages. That is what my witness tells me. This government has no foot to stand on when they are going to try and defend this. Now, finally, we come to section 341. What does that section say? Whoever wrongfully restrains any person in such a manner as to prevent that person from proceeding beyond certain circumscribing limits is said to wrongfully to confine that person. The HRNC officials went away. Where was the confinement? Did they were they like locked up in a room and the key thrown away? So these are you know, some of the things that come to my mind right away based on what has transpired. Now, the police was there. Now, shouldn't the police have acted unbiased and asked the HRNC officials, look, show us what happened. Show us the orders for uh, why you should be taking over this temple. So there is a lot of f sloppy execution, high-handed, hubris, arrogance, and they think they can get away with it. I mean, try doing something like this to a minority religious institution, guys. Just think about it. What is going on in the government of DMK? Who is in power? Is it Mr. Stalin or is it somebody else? And if that's somebody else, what is that person trying to do? And, and there are so many things that are wrong about this. They keep destroying temples. They don't offer any explanation. Most of the acts that they are doing are illegal. In fact, Dr. Swami has tweeted that the original High Court order itself can be successfully challenged and taken, uh, swept aside in Supreme Court if he takes up the case or anyone takes up the case as long as they present the correct arguments. So what is this government up to? Are they trying to pay somebody back for the money and favors, the votes they collected? Is that what is going on? Well, this is just the beginning. Wait and watch how things proceed. Thanks for watching our program. Please like, share and subscribe. And this is the first time that anyone has come up with the details of what is going to play out in the hours to come today. So we are sort of like, we are, we are telling you what is coming down the pipeline. So please, Please share it. Educate everybody. Everyone has a right to know how this government is acting in a high-handed manner, especially the government at the center. I think that uh, the Home Ministry needs to really act now because when there may be some IPS officials un, uh, involved in, in what happened. And, and some of these things have to be questioned. I, I have a feeling that this is going to blow up big. So let's wait and see what happens. Also, please click on the bell button for notifications. Thank you. Namaskar.